But at the same time, Assad in Syria has killed, the number is believed <coughs> in the region, 600,000 Muslims in the past decade or whatever it would be. And then in Yemen, we have the same issue again in relating to Saudi Arabia and, yeah. and, and the killings there. And these again are Muslims being killed by Muslims. Why are the progressives not talking about the 600,000 murdered Muslims in Syria? You just answered the question yourself. <laughs> Muslims killing Muslims. Yes, in both, in all cases, Muslims yeah, so killing Muslims. That's okay. Yeah. Jews killing Muslims. Oh, we don't like that. Right. Okay. So it is part of the anti-Jewish hatred. It's also the hatred of Israel. Um, and no, it was only last month Pakistan evicted one and a half million Afghans out of Yes, Africa. they did. One and a half yeah. million Afghans. Yeah. We we can't deport anybody from this country. Yeah. Pakistan just deported one and a half million Afghans. Yeah. Not a word said. Yeah. Couple of million Uyghur Muslims in China in concentration yes. camps, yeah. being sterilized, being brainwashed, being abused. Ever seen a march about that? No. So part of it is... So that's Chinese doing that to Muslims? Yes. So that's not a Muslim killing a Muslim, is it? So we've got... A... Yeah, it's communists killing Chinese Muslims. Yes. Yeah. That's acceptable. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because as we spoke about last week about bullies, China's too big. <laughs> yes. We're... China's too big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who do you think is funding some of this stuff? The far left lunatics in the UK and all that. Some of it will be Chinese money to yeah. destabilise one of their enemies. Yeah. So there's a war coming with China in our lifetime, I reckon. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I think. I think there, I there's think. a war coming. Um, so they're playing the Chinese are really good at the long game. Yeah. So they're planting dissidents now. They're, uh, like I say, it wouldn't surprise me if they're funding some of this disruption. I've got no proof about any of that. That's just my guess. Um, but then we have to think about why do they hate the Jews so much, the Muslims? And there's a couple of theories. The first one is, you can argue, they turned up after the Second World War and reclaimed their ancient homeland. And they were never wanted. That's an argument. Um, you can also then claim, they turned a piece of crap land with no natural resources into a first world country, mm -hmm. surrounded by 30, 40 Muslim states yeah. who can't do it. And most of those states They've got natural resources like oil and yeah. gas and stuff like yeah. that. So this tiny little land has embarrassed the Muslim nations, as in, you couldn't do any of this, yeah. could you? It's more than a first world country, isn't it? It's a first world democracy as well. Yeah. It's not just a first world country in terms yeah. of its, its, actual, its GDP and all that yeah. sort of stuff. It's a first world democracy as well. And one of the only democratic states, in true democratic states in that, in that area as well, isn't yeah. it? And there's another reason why the Jews in Israel are hated. Another reason would be the far left. The far left see Jews as capitalists. So, you know, we hate capitalists and Jews are the bankers. So they hate the Jews, they hate the Israelis. And that's why we have the far left on board. Um, and then you could also look at the woke. The woke dislike Israel because, first of all, Jews are perceived as white. And we've said this before, not mm. all Jews are white. Yeah, they're not white. Some, some look like Arabs and yeah. some are black Ethiopians, yeah. but they're perceived as being white and we hate white people. And they're also perceived as being the oppressor because you're stronger than your neighbours. Mm. So there's lots of things going on there. It's not just purely the historic hatred of Jews, and it is that as well, but there's other stuff laying on top of it. Yeah. Um, because of it, yeah. And that's why a perfect storm again, just like Black Lives Matter was a perfect storm for George Floyd. George Floyd was the criminal. Um, and the same thing's happened here now. We've been waiting, or the woke and the far left have been waiting for the next social justice. Fight. Were you looking at the camera then? Yeah, and I said criminal. <laughs> so some people know he's a criminal. Um, so this was just the latest thing that fitted perfectly for what they wanted to do. Yeah. Plus the Muslims, radical Muslims in this country now, have been um, emboldened over many decades now. They're ready for a fight. All they see is weak leadership in this country. Yeah. And they're going, this country could be ready for the taking here now. Or if, maybe not ready for the taking, but if we flex our muscles, we'll get a better deal. 
Mm. We'll get more power, we'll get more respect, we'll get more lenient um, you know, laws for us. We may get Sharia, we may be able to get this, we may be able to get that. So they're flexing their muscles and, and bullying the country to get more. Yeah, but what's interesting mm. is that, as you said, this is now on the front pages. Mm. So people are talking about it. Yeah. So people have now seen it. Yeah. They've recognised it and they're starting to discuss it, basically, and debate it. Which is yep. a real positive. So I'm thinking she, about it. Yeah. And they'll be speaking to their politicians and politicians yeah. will be going, Oh, I didn't realise that these things were that popular. If I adopt those opinions, I might get voted in yeah. or I might keep my seat. Yeah. So once politicians start hearing what the public wants and what's important to them, politicians don't care about their policies. I don't that politician yet who cared about their policies. They will say whatever they'll have to say to be elected. And then listening to the people, if they think they're the new policies I need, they will take those policies and run with them. Good, I hope so. If you like that video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and comment. And if you like what I'm saying about running for Mayor of Greater Manchester, then stick around, tell your family, tell your friends. It's the only way I'm going to have a chance of winning is a grassroots movement. So be part of that movement and hit that bell. Thanks.